B&M is one of the most popular manufacturers out there, arguably the most popular manufacturer. They dominate the hyper market, literally have a monopoly over the invert market, and their new toy, the dive coaster, has been picking up steam in recent years. Dives have become so popular that people don't like them simply for the fact that there are just so many of them and they're too similar to each other. But imagine if the only dive coaster built was Valrave. Imagine if Oblivion was never built, and in 2016, Cedar Point made a contract with B&M to custom design them an entirely new coaster model that no other park could build. That probably would be a legal nightmare and probably would be legally impossible, but whatever, just imagine it. If Valraven was the only dive coaster, people would go crazy for it, but it's not. So where was I going with this again? <laughs> no, no, like, seriously, seriously, wait, wait. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The B&M Wing Coaster is really popular. Okay, I got pretty sidetracked, yes, but the B&M Wing Coaster is really popular and it got me thinking. Why? This is a model introduced in 2011 and has sold the same number of units as the dive in half the time. It's also the floorless, obviously the friggin' stand up, and at this rate, it'll probably outsell the hyper. Not the Inra, though. The, that that shit is untouchable because of the Batman clones. But it's still selling at an alarming rate for coasters of this scale, so in this video, we're going to answer why the Beanham Wing Coaster is so damn popular. The first Wing Coaster was built back in 2011 at Gardaland, and it was called Raptor. And to be honest, guys, I think this ride perfectly encapsulates why this model is so successful. It has every aspect of what makes a good wing coaster and why they're so beloved. First, let's start with the design of the wing coaster as a whole. It's clearly a very eye-catching design with the two seats on either side of the track. There's nothing above you or below you and on either left or right side. Speaking from experience, you feel extremely open and exposed and when riding and literally everything feels like a head chopper or a foot chopper or an arm chopper or just a chopper, but we'll get back to that later. With coasters, the wackier the design, the more popular it tends to be and this is up there as one of the wackiest. So these rides do tend to be very popular in their respective parks. Gatekeeper at Cedar Point had a two and a half hour wait for me one of the longest in the park, even with this being a capacity monster. Now, yes, this could have to do with the fact that it's the first big ride you see when pulling up to CP, but I think it's also due to the fact that it's just a cool and beautiful looking ride. That's another thing about these wing coasters. They are just downright pretty. Raptors swooping around all these trees and lakes look straight out of a movie. This isn't even like that great terrain, just the ride getting this close and moving that elegantly makes it look like cool terrain. A lot of B&M wing coasters use their terrain like Thunderbird or Wild Eagle. Thunderbird makes you feel like you're weaving in and out of the woods and Wild Eagle is perched up on a mountain to make the ride look even more intimidating than a 200 foot B&M already is. Raptor utilizes the terrain great with the trees, the rock work, and the pond that you're swooping around. But getting back to what I was saying before about these being pretty coasters, you can see how Raptor is built over many pathways so people can just admire the ride. It's done here, here, and here, and that's because like I said, these are just very photogenic coasters and parks like to show them off. We also see this with Gatekeeper where the whole coaster is just the park entrance and holy moly, it is one good looking entrance. This rivals a 300 foot B&M Giga as the best park entrance out there and it's literally half the time. It's a marvel just walking under a gatekeeper as the park entrance. These rides are so good at just looking good, and that's what makes people want to get on them so bad. But they're also good at looking weird. Like I said, this train design is odd, but also some of these maneuvers that they go through are unlike anything we've seen before. I mean, just look at these wing over drops. These are the strangest looking drops I've seen in my life. Even weirder than those like beyond vertical drops, because it's literally just a curve and inversion into the drop. And the way that the train takes them at a slow speed, so you're just hanging upside down for a second. Like, what the f am I looking at here? Also, when was the last time being them using inline twist in the coaster. Come to think of it, when was the last time anyone used an inline twist in the coaster? It's just on these things. These elements are so different from whatever we see on other coasters and b &M coasters, obviously, and that's what makes them great. Another reason these wing coasters are so successful is the ability for them to be themed. For most b &Ms, your theming is pretty much skeletal to none. Like, how do you theme a b &M Hyper? You can't. You can barely theme a floorless, and you can kind of theme a dive, but it never really works out. Wing coasters, on the other hand, are themed more often than not. Parks go to great lengths to theme these things, with extensive on ride sets. It's funny, because for a park like Great America, you'll have legit no theming on Raging Bull, Max Force, or Goliath, but then X-Flight is like a whole movie set over here. Another good example is the Swarm, with its apocalyptic type theming. You have this massive crushed plane that you dive under right off the bat, this broken sign that you fly through, and the ruins that you swoop around through the end. And that's not even to mention the trains. Being on wing coaster trains are so wacky, but they lend themselves to being themed so well. They have this alien head design in the middle of it, so that the train just looks like a giant evil alien parasite. I don't know. Well, it, it, it looks cool. But if you want real theming, like Disney level theming, look no further than the Wing Coaster Falcon at a, uh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. But goddamn, look at this rock work. You could say this is terrain, but no, this is ground up theming. It's an artificial mountain that they constructed around the coaster and it looks so damn fine. The way the ride interacts with it swooping in and around all of it makes it look like a, it, it looks like a falcon. And then it swoops over the water with that graceful turn. Like why why can't we just get this in America? It, it just looks so good. The train here also has this bird design in it that I guess are supposed to look like falcons. So yeah, we have theming extending all the way down to the train 
I guess. But looking at Raptor again, we can see how Gardaland put a conscious effort to theme this ride with the broken bridges and the extensive rock work down here. Like, this is not average theming. None of these wing coasters have average theming. Parks always step it up for their wing coasters because the model lends themselves so easily to do. And that is for one reason, and it is also the final reason I'll be talking about today as to why people love these coasters. It's the near misses. Near misses are criminally underrated. This is an element that a lot of coasters have, but never get the appreciation they deserve. Wing coasters specialize in near misses because it is by design more exposed than other coasters. That's why basically every wing coaster out there has a near miss of some sort, which is why parks tend to theme these rides. They need to put in a near miss because it's just kind of required on wing coasters. And if they're already building a new structure for the coaster to fly through, why not just spend a little extra to make it look nice? Gatekeeper is a textbook example everyone likes to use for near misses. There are these massive keyholes built specifically for the ride to do a zero G roll through. And let me just say it works spectacularly. I rode in the left side wing seat and that was legitimately the only time I screamed on a roller coaster on that trip. You get so close to the keyholes and there is no safe space anywhere. Where on inverts, you can pull your feet up or on sit down coasters, you can duck. There is nowhere for you to hide from these full body choppers. And again, Raptor does this a lot with bridges, rock work, trees, and even just the track that you're weaving throughout. It all feels like you're going to smash into it in the best way possible. And yeah, that's basically it. Wing coasters are really popular because they are beautiful. They are themed well. They look kind of weird and have great body choppers. If you can think of any other reasons, then tell me in the comments below because that's all I could come up with. But I'm sure with a model this successful, there are tons more. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far and I will see you all next time.